and welcome back to Engadget Stage here at CES 2019. I am Sherlyn Lowe, Reviews Editor at Engadget, and we are here today to talk all about 5G in 2019 because 2019 is going to be the year of 5G. And joining me on the stage here are Durga Malati from Qualcomm as well as Derek Johnston from Samsung. Thank you for joining me today, sure, guys. No Thanks for your time. Thanks for having us, Sherilyn. So here at CES, I was expecting a lot more 5G news coming into the show, but we ended up hearing bits and pieces, not as much as we heard in December, because Qualcomm actually had a tech summit in Hawaii where there was a lot of news being made. Uh, but we did see a little bit here. Um, we have people announcing 5G hotspots. We have people announcing that they're going to make chipsets for 5G. Um, so not the splash that I was hoping, but still a buzzword at CES. I guess what I want to find out today from the two of you being so involved in the business is what exactly is it we can expect in 2019 in terms of the rollout? To what extent is 5G going to be a thing uh, in this year? So let's start with you, Durga. What do you think? All right. So 2019 is here. This is the year for 5G. Uh, this, I would say, is the third year in terms of the, the natural steps that we were taking. The specs are complete. The ecosystem is ready. We're going to see a global rollout in 2019 on 5G deployments. The action is going to begin in North America. You've already seen some of the announcements, but it's going to begin in North America, moving to Europe, uh -huh. Korea, Australia. And as we go a little further into the year, we're going to start seeing deployments coming up in China and Japan as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be worldwide deployment in 2019. The deployment is going to span multiple kinds of devices, fixed wireless access uh, with CPEs, mobile hotspots, and of course, smartphones. If you actually come to our booth, we have like a few smartphones just in terms of, you are right about the fact that a lot of the smartphones we haven't yet shown, the actual, yeah. all of them want to actually wait for a little bit of time to show it. Yeah. But the action is all throughout 2019 when it comes to 5G deployments. What do you think, Derek? Yeah, I agree with Durga, 5G is here. Um, you know, it's uh, Korea, all three major operators have launched their 5G service here in the U.S. Uh, we've been supporting Verizon with their 5G home service. That's, uh, we support that end-to-end -end in terms of the radio network as well as uh, the in-home CPEs and the devices. So providing 5G you know, home broadband service to, to consumers in their homes there. And uh, as Durga said, you know, the build-out really is happening here in 2019 in the U.S. You know, carriers have, have announced their build-out plans. Um, most, you know, I, I shouldn't say most, but many major metro areas will have 5G this year by the end of the year. And we're going to be launching you know, our first um, smartphone here in the first half of this year. We're very excited for that. So does that mean that when the 5G smartphones start retailing and people can start buying them, that when they turn on their phones, are they going to be using it on a 5G network? Is that going to be the case? Well, the way the most of the rollout is happening with what is known as a, in the beginning, it's going to be non-standalone mode. That means you power on your device. You're going to wake up on a 4G network. The 4G network will tell you, hey, by the way, you are in 5G coverage. You report that back to the network, and there you go. Now you start receiving 5G coverage. Okay. So that's the way. This is known as a non-standalone mode. For the first right. time, we've actually, you know, it used to be that if you were on 1G, then you would have to once in a while fall back to the previous G. Okay. That's not going to happen now. You're going to be simultaneously connected to both 4G and 5G at the same time as you go back and forth between 5G coverage. I, I don't think we're expecting to see 5G everywhere in 2019, right? We're talking, like you say, major metro areas, so big cities, uh, things like that. Uh, it, is it like every every single major city, like everyone that's living in a place with tall buildings is going to be able to use these phones? And also at the start, it's going to be the more expensive phones, right? We're, we're looking at like a, an almost a selective set of people that are going to be able to experience 5G in 2019. Does that seem true? I think the way to put it is that most of the carriers, if not all of them, are leveraging their existing 4G sites. So they're actually adding 5G new radio on top of the existing sites. So that's good. And yes, of course, in the beginning, the focus is going to be a lot more in urban, dense urban areas, maybe suburban areas as well. And as the year progresses, then you'll start seeing a more proliferation into a larger number of markets. But it's going to be like a, a, a way, the way the rollouts are actually happening, if you see the way the network deployments are occurring, actually it's going to be far more extensive than we've seen before. As mentioned, the pace at which the network is evolving into 5G and the way that it's getting deployed, it's quite something. We haven't seen this in 4G, but that's the way that we have seen it so far. Mm -hmm. Derek, anything to add? 
Yeah, no, I think I think people will be surprised at the speed at which these networks are, are you know, are quickly growing, that the service is available. So it seems like sooner than expected, we're going to see real 5G for, for a lot of people. So let's talk a little bit about what that means, right? What What is the experience like for the consumer? How is it going to change? How is it going to improve? What are some of the the challenges that they might face. Let's start with the good things, right? Derek, could you maybe paint that picture for us? Sure, so I think, you know, from an experience perspective, to put some context around 5G, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of discussion on this, yeah. and people are probably well familiar with the performance characteristics, but for context over 4G LTE, you know, you're talking about 100 times faster than the first 4G LTE networks, 20 times faster than the, the current standard version of 4G LTE, but then there's also the, the latency factor. And so, and that's really where the power of 5G, I think, comes into play. And so, that low latency will be able to enable folks to um, really unlock the power of a lot of real-time applications. AR, VR, gaming, video conferencing, remote machine operation, things of that nature. And so, I think those are the interesting use cases that I think consumers will really get kind of excited about. On the device side, you know, just for standard content, I mean, you know, it's just going to mean that, you know, you can, access super rich content ultra fast you know so if you are about to get on that plane you forgot to download the latest you know uh, series on Netflix boom you can do it within minutes so is that something we're expecting to see happen immediately with the rollout is that something that uh, or is it something that will kind of tail like slow down a little bit as more and more people get on networks what I do you think, think during I think the way to look at this is the use cases just coming back to that point on the use cases this question comes up quite frequently so I want to make sure that people understand yeah. one thing over here 5g yes the peak rates are pretty high but it's very important to understand that 5g is a lot more about the average data rates like on an average if you're just walking around and let's say you get very high data rates on an average even though the peak data rate is the same that's going to change the way that you start using your devices. Mm -hmm. So first, the existing use cases, whether it's file downloads, browsing, watching a higher quality video, that gets improved significantly. Okay. That's like the lowest hanging fruit that you can go with 5G. Mm -hmm. So that's step one. The next thing would be new kinds of devices will start using 5G. Right. This can start from something as simple as always connected laptops. Mm -hmm. Now we can start bringing in 5G modules into laptops. Imagine in a convention center like this, you're getting like gigabit speeds more frequently than not. That's going to change the way that you actually start thinking about it. And we are still not yet in the XR domain. So this is like the first set of use cases. Right. Then we have the low latency XR, industrial applications, enterprise applications. There's so many different things that come in. Mm -hmm. We think that it's going to be a gradual progression. One shouldn't expect to go walk into a store and come back with something that is only about XR. It's a combination of use cases, starting with the existing ones becoming significantly better. And for an, from a carrier standpoint, it is the cost per bit that's delivered to the user happens to be smaller. So hopefully we will start seeing more and more unlimited data plans, okay. something that all of us would like. Yeah. To my understanding, based on my conversations with people in the industry, 5G, 9G is not going to actually be a thing. It sounds like 5G is the last number iteration we might have. It's uh, we're not going to think about a 6G. We're not thinking about a 7G. Is that true? Uh, is that still true, Durga? So, you know, if you kind of take a look at the overall vision of 5G, let's be very clear on this. 5G was not just for smartphones. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. We call it as a unifying connectivity fabric. It's about massive IoT. It's about XR. It's about industrial applications, wireless control of robots vehicular communication. So there's so much more to it. Yeah. Let's just see how we actually go ahead with 5G. By the time we are actually done with a lot of these new verticals that are coming up, of course we are starting with smartphones and mobile broadband devices yeah. because that's where a lot of the current install base is. That's just the foundation. We're going to start seeing more new vertical industries starting to pan off using 5G technology. Maybe at some point in time as we go through the whole 5G process, the whole nomenclature, the G terminology, might itself become redundant. We don't know that yet. Right. I think we just have to keep working at it and see where we land up. What do you think is the biggest issue that's stopping it from happening faster? Let's start with you, Derek. Sure. What do you think? Yeah, so I think the, a couple of challenges that the industry is facing right now is, um, one is, you know, if you look at, at um, Korea having just launched their commercial service. Mm -hmm. They have a kind of a nice centrally managed uh, spectrum situation. And so spectrum is one of the issues where, again, the FCC is doing a great job, but um, operators need need some spectrum. And so the upcoming uh, millimeter wave 
uh, spectrum auctions are kind of crucial to continuing to advance uh, 5G here in, in the US. I think the other uh, challenge in the industry, but this, this one we've made a lot of strides on, and I think a lot of the municipalities have kind of caught on and have realized the power that 5G can offer them, but small cell siting and things of this nature to, to actually be able to, to build and deploy those networks um, has been kind of an industry challenge in the US, and that yeah. includes access to things like fiber. Whereas you know, in, a, in a lot of the Asian markets, fiber is much more prolific and there's much more access to it and in the US, that's not necessarily the case. And so those are some of the challenges that I think we're finding from deploying here in the US. What technologies do you see as moving us forward towards, let's theoretically the next G, if there is one, right? Uh, Derek, what do you think? I think the, the amount of R&D, particularly that, that um, folks like ourselves and that Qualcomm did early on, the past five to six years have solved for a lot of the challenges that people didn't think would, would overcome. Everybody thought that millimeter wave was a great point-to-point -point technology, line of sight, mm -hmm. but with advanced beam forming and things like this, we're bouncing signals you know, yeah. around corners of buildings. And so you know, we're kind of getting to the bounds of you know, physics, of what's physically yeah. possible. So As 5G goes into the IoT domain, that part of it is going to go more into how do we scale it from thousands of devices to millions of devices mm -hmm. yeah. per given cell site and how do you get to that? But it's this ultra reliable, low latency communication. Mm -hmm. At least that's the part that actually really excites me as okay. to what is the next generation use cases. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of it will even get into XR by the yeah. way, but it, there's a lot more to it. So we're thinking of uh, the idea, the concept of data as air, right? As it's something that's going to be a, so reliable that's always there. It's wireline replacement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much. You know what? We've run out of time. Can you imagine that? Um, thank you so much for joining us here on stage today. Well, I, I, I had a, this is my last interview for CES 2019. I am very excited to go back home tomorrow. Uh, so I want to end things with a high 5G. High 5G. High 5G. There you go. High 5G. High 5G. High 5G. High 5G. High 5G. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more at Engadget.com. Thank you. Thank you.